Welcome, today I'm going to be showing you a very nice plug and play four camera indoor outdoor closed circuit surveillance system which is very user friendly, provides excellent HD video quality which is 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second or below, has incredible night vision capability, records video if a 3.5 inch SATA hard drive is installed inside the unit, has very good wireless range up to 160 feet away from this unit or 65 feet away through walls. And this unit also allows remote viewing anywhere using your smartphone or tablet. I was looking for a nice system and the timing could not have been any better. The Juan company contacted me and offered to send me the system you see here for free just as long as I made a video showing the product along with a demonstration. When a company contacts me with a product, if I feel that product is not very good quality or it lacks certain things I like, I will not accept the offer. So clearly the system was good enough for me to accept the company's offer. I will be posting links in the video description area if you are interested in purchasing one of these systems after watching this video. I will not be profiting by the sale of any of these units. If you have any questions after purchasing a system, please contact the seller. The system you're looking at right over here is model number TC734. The operating system for this unit is a Linux operating system. All of the videos from these cameras are compressed using H.264 and the reason why that's done is to allow for extended recording. When you purchase the unit, there is no hard drive installed inside the unit. So you're going to have to add one. You can pick them up on eBay. They're very inexpensive. I happen to have a 500 gig laying around from an old laptop, so I installed it in the unit. I'm going to show you later in the video how to install the hard drive. The system includes the two antennas for the main unit, as well as this ethernet cable right here in the back. This connects you to the internet, so you'll have access to all of your video. A mouse, there's the power supply for this unit. Each camera comes with a power supply. Each one must be plugged in. Now the good thing about this system, there's a lot of people out there that are not very handy. So for them, this will be perfect because you could take one of these cameras, put them wherever you would like to place them. Right here, this holds. You screw them into the wall. It's fully adjustable. Included with the kit are these anchors. You don't have to use these. You could use wood screws if this is going into wood, or you can use tap cons if it's going to be going into concrete. Wherever you position the camera, you're going to take the power cord for each one right here, plug it into each camera, plug this in, and you're finished. The signal will be transmitted to the unit. Every one of these cameras is matched to the unit. You're not going to have to match the camera to the unit unless one is damaged and another camera is sent to you as a replacement, then you will have to match it. And it's a fairly simple process using the instructions enclosed with the unit. The system also has the capability of being wired directly. So if you're concerned that somebody might try and jam your signal, what you could do is you could take this CAT5E wire. This is the Ethernet cable. You could purchase this in a box of a thousand feet very inexpensively for around maybe $35. And you can also pick up these connectors for the end as well as the crimper for another $15. So for probably $50 or less, you'll have everything you need if you would like to wire each one of these cameras instead of have them wireless. By wiring them directly, there's very little chance of anybody interfering with the signal from your cameras. Keep in mind, this system is not a PoE system. There are POE systems available by this company. What POE stands for is power over ethernet. So this cable on a POE system would allow the camera to be powered as well as send the signal to the unit. So you would not need this separate power adapter for the camera. This particular system, whether it's wireless or wired, you need to power it using the adapter.
The good thing about a wireless system like this is if you have a detached garage where you'd like to mount a camera, normally you will not be able to run a wire through your attic to get to that garage because there's a space between the two buildings. So you would use a wireless system like you see here. Now the system, after trying it out, I can say works extremely well. There is one minor issue, and that is that this wire is a little short to go to these cameras. I'm going to post a link in the video description area showing a very inexpensive extension that you could purchase for this DC jack. You can add 5 feet, 15 feet, and it's only $3 for the extension each. So for around $14, $15, you'll have enough wire to extend each one of these if you want to go very high up. Over here, you see these connectors. What this is designed for is if you're going to use wired connection using this 24 gauge wire, the Ethernet cable, which is the Cat5e, before installing the connectors, you slide this over the wire, all the way down, install the connector, and then what you'll do is you'll plug this into the camera right there, and then this piece here slides over, twists, and locks. When you tighten this connector down, you can see the diameter shrinking. It gets very tight around the cable. You will not have any moisture, humidity, nothing will enter that connection. When I go to install these cameras, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole high up into the soffit or into the wall just below the soffit. I'm going to feed these connections into the attic. When this is in the attic, I'm going to use everything using wireless, but I'm going to install an electrical receptacle. And that receptacle is going to be a duplex receptacle. It's going to be a standard three-prong receptacle on one side, which is a duplex, top and bottom. And next to that, I'm going to have another one. So it's going to be a receptacle next to a receptacle. So I'll be able to plug in all four of these units side by side. And then the only thing I'm going to need is those extension cords to plug in. In addition to what you see here, in order to view this on your display, could be your TV, a monitor, or whatever, you're going to need either a VGA cable or an HDMI cable. Of course, the HDMI cable is going to give you the best image quality, and then the VGA is going to be a lower quality. Either one will work just fine. On the back of the unit, there's two USB ports. One is for this plug and play mouse, and the other is for a flash drive. When video is stored on the system, if an event occurs and you would like to take that information off the hard drive before the hard drive is erased again, you could plug in your thumb drive or your flash drive in the back of the unit, transfer the video to the flash drive. The unit has three different playback modes instant, regular, and event. And there's four different recording modes, manual, timed. You can have this unit turn on the recorder for each one of these cameras or a camera that you choose at certain times of the day. It could be every day or it could turn on a certain time of the day on a certain day of the week. You can also set the system to record when motion is detected. And it doesn't have to be the entire field of view for the camera. You could choose just an area of the image that you're viewing. If somebody walks into that area of that image, recording will begin. Also with this system, it will send you alerts. So when you're connected up to the internet, if somebody walks in front of this camera, you're going to hear an alarm sound on the unit in the house alerting you that there's an intruder. And you can also have an email sent to your smartphone alerting you that there was motion detected on one of your cameras. You'll be able to turn on your smartphone to access the videos to see exactly what is going on. This is a great system for your home or your business. Now the lenses on the camera are infrared cut lenses. They're double filter lenses and the reason why they're double filtered lenses is to improve the color of the video. You want to have more natural looking color on the video and that's the purpose of those lenses to give you more realistic color. The antennas screw on very easily. Let's grab right there. 
very simple. Just screw each one on. And you really want to keep all the antennas vertical. If the ones on the unit are vertical, make sure these are vertical. You want everything on the same plane. If you lay that flat, then you're going to want to lay these flat. So just make sure everything is the same. The infrared illuminators on this camera are extremely powerful. There's three of them right here, the three white ones. Down here at the bottom, you're going to see this little sensor area. That's a photo cell. When the light drops to a low enough level, it turns on the three infrared illuminators. When it gets brighter, it turns them off. The night vision capability of this camera, I have to say, is excellent. They say it's good up to around 65 feet, but I can tell you with the test that I did last night, which you're going to see later in this video, you can see beyond 65 feet. And the test was performed with no outside lights on, a new moon, and just the neighbor's lights on way in the distance. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to position each one of these cameras in a different spot. I'm going to connect this up to the TV and I'm going to show you how the whole system works. Here's a quick look at the back of the unit. Over here is your VGA to your display. Over here is your HDMI. Your mouse goes here or there. And one of these is for your thumb drive, your flash drive. Power adapter here. And over here where it says WAN is where you would connect the Ethernet cable right here to the Internet. If you're going to wire all the cameras up, then you can wire into each one of these spots right here. Installing a hard drive on this NVR unit is very simple. You're going to remove the Phillips screw located at the back top of each corner of the cover. One here and one over here. Once that's been removed, you're going to lift up on the cover, slide it backwards, and remove it. Right over here, you're going to see a cable, one there and one here, and that is where you're going to be connecting your three and a half inch hard drive. If you have an old notebook computer laying around, like I do, you could take out the hard drive from there. In this case, this is a 500 gigabyte. I'm going to be using that. If you do not have a hard drive laying around, then you can go onto eBay and you can pick up a one terabyte hard drive for around thirty or forty dollars. There's plenty of them on there. You can go as high as four terabytes if you wanted for a lot longer recording time. So if there's any problem that occurs, I can go back three, four, five, six days earlier to take a look at the video footage. Then I can take the footage that I find and I can back it up onto a thumb drive using the USB slot on the back of the NVR unit. If you do not have screws for your hard drive, you can run over to the hardware store and these are metric three screws. It's a flat head with the countersink so it seats very nicely inside these dimples when the hard drive is screwed in. Let me show you how that goes in. To install the hard drive, just take the wires you see here, make sure they're properly lined up. And this one goes like that. That's clicked in. This one here goes right next to it, make sure that's right. And that one goes this way. There is a right and wrong way, so look carefully at the cable before you plug them in. This is going to go in position over those holes, and I'm going to screw in the screws. Once the hard drive is secured using those screws, you can put the cover back on, and you're good to go for recording. The unit is all connected up with the exception of the internet connection with the ethernet cable, which would go to the WAN port on the back. I'm going to be using a VGA cable instead of an HDMI. I do not have an HDMI cable handy. I will get one later, but for now, this will do. The mouse is plugged into the USB. I'm going to move the camera now towards the television set so you can see everything that's going on, and then I'm going to plug in the unit with the DC jack. When the unit is powered up, you should see all four camera images displayed, as you see here. Using the mouse, you can go over to OK. Just click OK. There is no password. And then you can set the time. This is already set for Eastern, the correct date. And you can set the time. 
and you would leave all of this alone. You hit next. Over here is the hard drive that's installed in this unit. It's a 500 gigabyte capacity. It was formatted. The format takes up space for the file system, so it's less than 500. And a little bit of that has been used already with some video. If you would like to format a new one, you would go over to Format right here. Click on it, and then you would go down to Format and hit Yes. Once that's complete, you click OK. Now you go to Next. Now over here, if you'd like to record, now each channel, this one through four, that's each one of your cameras. So down here on the right, it says Camera 4 where I'm pointing. So if I wanted to record Camera 4, I would click Camera 4, and then I could choose different schedules, the time which I'd like to record, Right here it's set for all the time, 24 hours a day. I could turn that off and then I click motion only. If you do that, you can hit next. This is okay, leave that DHCP, hit next. This is all good here. And hit next. This is a boot wizard that says enable, leave that alone, done. Now, over here, you can see the signal strength, it's very strong. That's three bars out of the four. Over there is two, up top is four bars. I can adjust the color, the brightness, I can adjust everything about the image as you're seeing. Over there, displays the time, it says 1.48 and 11 seconds, it says Thursday. It says December 10th, 2015. Then you have camera one over there, camera two, camera three, camera four. So when you do all your settings, you've got to remember which camera you're working on. So let's go back to that menu again. Right click, and I could do even video playback with the left click. I could do whatever I want to do here, five minutes, ten minutes of playback. I can click on video and do it again. And you'll back up. This is where you would take your flash drive. See it says USB storage. There's nothing plugged in so it's not showing up. I could choose the channel, which is the camera. So if I wanted to, if something happened on camera 4, I would choose channel 4 only. I can choose when there was a, an event where there was motion that triggered the camera. I could choose a, a specific time and you would do that all from this screen right here. This one I don't use. Now the one that says color adjust, I could go to, let's go to the bottom right one, which is four. And now I'm going to play around with the color. Let me go to the saturation over to the right to show you. You see it got that hue to it now. If I go all the way to the left, it'll be black and white. Go back to the 32, 33. You can adjust the brightness the same way, all the way up. And I go all the way down to there if I want. Put this back where it was. The hue, and then you have the contrast. There is a little bit of a lag when you adjust it. I go that way. Too dark, so let's put that back at 32. And I'll hit OK. If you had a system where you were able to adjust the volume, if it had a microphone on the camera, you would do that here. This system does not have that. You could do manual record. So I can click right now, 4, and I can hit OK, and it'll start recording to the hard drive. Or I can do all on. Now every single one should be recording. Let's go back. Yep, all of them are going. And I can turn all off. System setup. Let's see what that one. Let's go to the setup wizard. No, nope, we did that one already. Now, if you want to go back to the four screens, you double click on the left. 
and now you got all four again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this one up here, which is camera two. Let me double click on that one. This is outside. I'm going to take a right click here. I'm going to go to system setup. I want to go over to record, left click. I'm going to go to channel two. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go over to sensor setup. Now I'm going to choose channel two. All right, and I'm going to set an alarm for five seconds. This is where I can actually have motion send me an email. So when this is connected to the internet, if somebody walked by the camera that you see right here, I'm going to be emailed on my smartphone that somebody walked through this area. And I'll be able to look at it on my smartphone to see who is there. But I'm going to also set buzzer. This is very handy. On the unit itself, there's a buzzer. So if somebody's walking around on your property, inside the house, you're going to have a buzzer go off inside the control box to notify you that there is somebody walking around. So I'm going to put it on buzzer, and I'm going to click on 5 seconds, channel 2, and I'm not going to record anything. So if I wanted to record it as well, I would click 2 to record. So I'm not going to record it. I'm just going to set the sensor setup. I'm going to hit OK right now. Hit Apply and hit OK. Alright, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to walk outside right past the area you see right here. And when I do, you're going to hear a buzzer go off inside the house on the control unit. As you heard, the alarm went off, indicating motion was detected at that camera. Go back to the system setup. And we go back to record setup. Sensor. There's two, five seconds. I can turn that notification off. You want email sent instead, you can click that. Let's see video detection. Now what this part here does, lets you choose an area. So let me go inside. I'm going to show you this. This is pretty cool. Let me go to three. All right, this is a bedroom. So what I'm going to do is I want to edit an area. First thing I'm going to do is right click, clear all. Now I'm going to go just where the doorway is all the way down like, like that, all right? Now, if any motion is detected in the blue area, it will trigger the alarm. If any motion is detected on the right side, where it's not highlighted in blue, the alarm will not go off. So now I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit return, and I'm going to choose buzzer. And I'm going to choose OK. Let's get out of here. Let me go over to this one. And I'm going to walk by that bedroom. And as soon as I go past that doorway, you should hear the buzzer go off. Okay, you saw how well that works. Now let me go over here and double click with the left. Now we're back to the quad screen. Now I'm going to show you what you have to do if you would like to access all this video as well as the alerts by email on your smartphone. For remote viewing, you're going to have to download the app. Now for your iPhone, you can go to the App Store and you can search for 
E S E E N E T. You can input APP ID password, click download. You can also scan right here with your smartphone. If you don't have a code scanner installed on your smartphone, go to your app store and then you can install one first, come back and then scan this. Once the app has been downloaded and installed, you just follow the instructions to set up your system. There's one other one you can use. It's called XMEYE, -E, and that's another app. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.